We are back for hopefully the final installment for today, part six, one day build of the man rod, land Roddy. So we're doing, taking the man Rody, I'm sorry, Rody, and we took the extra builder parts to get us the P Bandai land, which uh, hopefully you remember is off white and orange which makes it pretty damn cool. Um, so we have done 90% of this today. Like any good show, I prepped and I started yesterday by cutting the pieces out and getting the uh, kit ready to work on. So I had a little head start. About an hour and a half worth of work yesterday, cutting out, seeing the... Uh, feet which I did a good job with that day not so good with the arms today but it's all learning and uh, just kind of want to demystify airbrushing custom building by tackling one of the big issues in Gunpla today and taking on a P Bandai and trying to create it myself at home and this was a really easy one because basically it's just a color swap and some parts that are already available some PE bandizer are like that. Some PE bandizer, you just have to take two kits and slam them together and repaint them. So, you know, I think another one I might tackle in the near future is um, that silver, um, I think it's a pirate one called, uh, God, I'm drawing a blank right now, but that uh, Crossbones, the silver crossbones, because I think that he's just dual wielding. Maybe his guns are a little bit different, but nothing amazingly different to spend all that extra P Bandai money. It's just some colors. So, trying to help you guys, you new builders, builders, important builders, show you how it's done. Um, I'm sure veterans know most of this stuff, but, uh, and I think part four, we did a Zenith, Zenithal shading. And that was a pretty cool technique, uh, a pre-highlighting technique. Instead of pre-shading, we pre-highlight it. So that was pretty cool. So right now we are going to start building our kit back together. I just masked and did the one section that needed masking. Let that dry a little bit. So we'll start top down on this kit. Should be mostly dry by now. And if we're lucky, we didn't mm -hmm. screw up anywhere. And all the colors came out in the right combinations. If not, screwed. So I think today's goal was just to get, you know, if you bought this as a P Bandai kit, you would just have colored plastic and basically have painted the plastic. So that's the goal for today. I'm not gonna do any washes. I'm not even gonna put the gloss coat on tonight because it's getting kind of late. Um, should probably touch this up because I did have this alligator clipped right here so it is missing a little bit of paint but i'm gonna do that last because i do have one thing i want to touch with orange real quick so i can figure out what part that's to right here so in most of the pictures i've seen of this kit or actually the artwork for this those little crevices have orange there i guess it could be any light color but they chose to put orange there so I'm going to attempt to paint that little dot of orange in I'm using a uh, Citadel uh, brush, one of their high-end brushes, about $19 for this brush. It's extra small. Layer on brush. Um, I think it's a natural hair brush. Why it costs more than the other ones. So... Try to get this little dab in. See, we do this on camera too. It'd be nice. Usually, stuff like this doesn't scare me because. If you do it on bare plastic, it's no biggie if you miss. 
scrape it off, but since this is already all painted, we don't want to miss. No misses allowed. So I got I got to get this right. So as I was explaining in the earlier video, what you always want to do is uh, when you're painting very detailed stuff, and you have to stabilize yourself because your hands will shake no matter what. Everybody's hands shake a little bit. What you want to do is brace your hands against your arms against the table. What I'm trying to do is get enough here where I can just dab it and it'll pull in this section. And I missed by a little bit. I grab it too thick available. Okay. So for the most part, the same technique worked. I was able to scrape it off without uh, getting it too much into the off-white color. This is not easy. This may be the hardest part of the whole kit. <laughs> Probably should have the... Uh, spectacles on right now the magnifying glass or something because this is a pretty small piece I'm trying to keep it at a distance I'm loving this thought this would be a little easier. But almost there. So I'm trying to scrape off any stray stuff without scraping all the way through the paint. Um, good hobby shop. What the fuck? Sorry. Good hobby shop should have the uh, fine tip Q-tips. So we're going to try to use that to clean up a little bit of this overflow we got here. And that ate right down. Ugh, detail painting. Not for a faint at heart. So that one actually had it way worse because when I was trying to pull it off, I guess it was so thin that it stripped the paint. So now we have to pray to have enough of the cream color. Probably don't, but we're gonna make this work. Just gotta get some thinner in it because it's starting to dry up. All right. Now we have to work backwards and clean up our mess ups. And try to maintain our uh, otherwise smooth paint job.
actually, when I'm looking at the final product, I think the side that looked the scariest might be the side that's the best. That's not too bad. I think we cleaned that up enough. Now my only problem is I have a couple specks on that side. A couple specks of black because we're pulled up the paint. And on this side, my back edge is a little rugged. So I'm going to try to clean this brush off again and go on with orange one more time. Wish me luck. Dab the brush, roll it. I dabbed it in thinner first. Get just a little bit on the tip here. And we're gonna try to drop a straight line on the back side here. Such a small spot. Ugh. Paint's getting thick. There we go. There we go. There we go. Got it. Not worried about too much of this little black spots. Just want to get them cleaned up a little bit. If they're intruding on the yellow orange, is what I have a problem with. I think we got it. So when you're doing like this very detailed stuff. A lot of times you got to work the paint both ways. You got to, you know, put your detail color in and come back, touch it up. Come then maybe you got to touch up the detail color again. So back and forth. Just requires patience and confidence that you'll get it right eventually. So there we go. Those look pretty good. Um I'm really willing to leave this alone, but then I'm such a jerk that I'm probably going to try to get that last little bit of black out of there. Which I'll probably mess up and be doing this for another half hour. I think I'm good. Yeah, I can move with that. a little shade difference but that's okay um hopefully with the uh the top coats and all that'll all resolve itself we'll not notice it 
praying on the mat code at the end to save the day. All right, let's see where we at. So now we can start constructing. Um, that took longer than I thought, so we might be ready to pull off this tape. Yeah, this isn't really good yet, but as long as I carefully pull off the tape, we can see if we screw this up. Uh, oh, there's a little bit there, so we might need it. This is good that we did it now, because we got the orange out. We can just touch it up. So far, so good. A little overspray got under there. Uh, the side, except for the tape. Tape got a little yucky there. Try to see that's what happens when you tape on the paint, it's not totally finished. But again, I think I'm hoping. Can't feel what that feels like. They're pegging my finger up. Ah, forget these, this glove. I think is there's some residue from the tape on here. So, yeah. So it's actually not the paint that got messed up. The tape, which is usually pretty good, left a little bit of residue behind. So that's a little bit disappointing, but I don't think it's a big issue. That will definitely disappear with the uh, following coats that are going on it. So... We ain't gonna cry over that. Let's just touch this up while we got this orange before it dries up. So I just wanna hit a little really thinned out orange across there. Try to fade it. Hopefully that will fade nicely in. And there were some definite mistakes on this side. So I'll hit that. side so if you've been doing custom paint jobs like, oh my god every time I do it I screw up that's part of the process bro you're gonna mess up you just gotta figure out how to fix it do you just throw it away or do you fix it start over again or do you fix it you know, sometimes you have to start over again. It might give you the best result because you're like just screwing up the paint at some point. But usually, you can just fix it. So a couple spots for some reason. I thought I taped decent, but overspray is a little bit of a problem sometimes. So this is fine because this part here needed a highlight anyway, really. And this is going to be so gradual, you won't even notice it. Right. We got a little black dot there. Try to, oh, same the dot that came right off. Not sure what's going on up here, but we're going to hit it just to get rid of it. So it might be a little bit of shade issues because of this. Maybe. Probably. But I'm going to try to play them off. I'm really hoping that tape that got stuck there, stuck, doesn't F everything up, but I think it'll disappear. I'm actually want to kind of wipe it, but I'm kind of scared. I should be able to wipe it with uh, water. It should be fine, but I'm scared. That's one. 
Let's see if we did any better on this one. Let's hope. That was a little disappointing. It's amazing how you get splats in places. I don't get it. So this is like the great reveals when you're taking off your tape and you realize you messed something up. I guess it's the ungreat reveal. But when you nail it, it feels good. So far, this one's looking a little bit better. The tape even did better, I don't know why. This one's looking a lot better. A little weird things with the tape there, but the line stays sharp. I don't think I got much overspray. A little bit in the corner there. Not bad at all. Happy with that one. So I just got to touch up that corner. Overshot there. So we got to overshoot there and that corner. Not bad. All right, Ugh, stupid tape. Usually to me, this tape does really good. I don't know what happened. I guess it's probably my fault because it's not fully dry. If I let it dry, the tape probably wouldn't have reacted, maybe. Maybe it's the paint. Don't know, don't care. All right, moving on. So now we can start putting stuff together. Let's get this paint out of the way before we spill something. Stuff I don't need, and we'll hit that later. That's uh, at the end type of deal. Like I said, the gun has the same problem where I was holding it with the clip since it's all one piece after I built it and glued it together. All right, how does this stupid kit go together? So I haven't actually built this kit because I just cut them out, I didn't build. So that should be pretty easy. Now, maybe you want to get fancy later. I'm not sure if those things had energy running through them. I think they did. So you could try to put some lines of energy in there if you want to get real fancy. I ain't getting crazy like that. I don't think, I think we're going to call this done pretty soon. Shaboom. Sorry if I'm going to build this a little bit slow. Like I said, I haven't really seen this put together yet. Because all I did was chop it out. And I didn't even cut out all my uh, PC parts yet. That's probably a good thing because I didn't figure out those too. So I got PC8. I respect you guys who do everything with gloves on, man. Hands get sweaty. It feels gross. trying to put my fingers in the least contact with stuff as possible. Keep everything on safe surfaces. PC2. Let's make two of those.
definitely encourage you guys. Anybody new, IBO is a great, great kit, great series. I think, it's, you know, I think if you get into Gundam around now, is probably what brought you in if you're just new to it. And those kits are great kits to start with. So I highly recommend those as starter kits. The Barbados is a great one. What the freak am I looking at? B6. Uh, must be that big back piece. Yeah, I guess so. Or not. This part, yes, yeah, this part. All right, so look at this part. I'm trying to keep my fingers off that paint I just painted. That would be disastrous. So these little uh, PC parts have to go in exactly the right way or they do not act right. I think I got it deep enough. All right. So when you paint stuff, the tolerances get ridiculous. It's a lot harder to put the stuff in. the sweaty glow. I think I'm starting to get some orange on the, on the white. I don't want to do that. But this part is being a dick.
that incorrectly. I guess so. Alright, so what's cool about this one has that little extra movement there. It's always nice in kits. Gives you that little extra. Alright, what's next? So next we have just did that. The big back piece goes on. So this is one I should have probably sealed the seam of really. That is taking a lot of putty, I guess. I should have built this all as one piece looking at it now. This is one of the reasons you should have probably built your kit first. I didn't even think about that one because that is a huge gap there that I do not like. of the actual kit now if it's in there I wouldn't mind but yeah uh, yeah I mean from the drawings there's definitely a shadow line there not sure if that's on purpose though I mean it would make sense that, that would be two parts Close. Yeah, that's not too bad. See, so, yeah, I mean, that could have been filled in. And I guess I still could, and I just had to go over just that area, take this off. I don't have enough of the color left, though. What I could do is hit it with a lighter color, like almost a white, if I went over that part. But I'm going to leave that alone. I think. I think it looks all right. Maybe when it's all uh, panel lined up, it'll actually look good because it'll just be another panel line looking thing. Hopefully. All right, what's next? Thrusters in the back. So we have thrusters. We painted them all together on this. Out really well. These pop right. I think these are they all the same size. I think this that's not fitting on there though. So are these different? Are these look the same. Thrusters for last because either there are some other ones or someone's up. This does not seem like it wants to go in there. Yeah, not even close. All right, we'll leave that for later. I don't think it's now because that came from another kid. That's not possible. All right. Moving on, what's next? So now they want to put this weird waste part in, I guess. Just right here, what goes with this? Let's need a PC part, PC4. Where's PC4 go? PC4. And that goes this direction. Really cool little shocks in there. You get really detailed and paint those in, but I think it's all going to get covered up anyway. So now we put that nice orange chest piece in, so it starts to come together. Yeah. 
That's what we did it for. Right there. That's what we did it for. The house coming together. So guys, when you guys do these, do you guys paint these in? Like shade them in? These big holes? I think I might want to put some shadowing in there. I don't know if I want to shade the whole thing in. I like the idea of shadow. All right, next. Okay, so uh, somebody asked about the paint. So this was to me a paint, which is solvent base mixed with uh, Mr. Leveling thinner. So to me, it's an acrylic mixed with solvent, and then you add Mr. Leveling thinner, and you basically get a lacquer. And one of the good things about lacquers is they dry fast and they dry hard. Um, it probably wasn't fully cured because when I put my tape to, to mask something. I got a lot of tape residue left, which I haven't really had an issue with before. So I'm assuming that's because of that. But otherwise than that, the residue, I mean, the residue, I might be able to clean up with some water, but I'm just not ready to do that right now. So I think it'll get covered up in the uh, next couple layers. But uh, still going. Got them nerd ass. Yes, I am. One day bill. We're almost done. We're just putting it together now. First assembly, so a little rough. Paint at first, you know that's not my style, Mr. Gundam Nerd. I always uh, build first, then uh, then disassemble. But I try tried it this time, or I just parted it and uh, went right into the paint. And again, see, I don't like that big seam right there. If I had built it first, I would have seen that that would have been a problem. It just needs to be pushed together a little bit more. The paint's making it hard. for the head see the rest is paid off here not gonna worry about the stickers right now because I'm probably gonna figure out how to paint my own triangles which will be fun because on this kit I think his eyes were green or bluish let's see let's take a look at the picture yeah greenish <laughs> so I got a couple ideas how to do that but not today. So we'll be leaving these stickers off. We're going to use those anyway, right? <laughs> All right, so let's put this head together. So I need the bottom part and the top part. Three pieces. It's not going to come apart again. <laughs> Maybe I should have figured out how to do those eyes before that. Oh, well. I'm going to pop that on now. For some reason, I didn't want you to. But... Yeah, boy. Looking good. Feeling it. Hmm. 
Hmm. All right, so now we're doing arms. So we'll need those things here. point marker for the eyes which one would that be <laughs> in pink they got to be or green the only one they have like that is the paint marker that thing ain't fine enough you gotta be triangles what i'm thinking about doing is taking um really thin plastic card taking it to the chopper and trying to cut out really small triangles so they'll actually have a little depth to them which will be nice hit them with the uh chrome marker the mala molotol whatever it's called, chrome marker, and then hit clear green over them so it'll have a nice uh, shine to them. Yeah, that'd be dope if it works, but it's going to be kind of those triangles. It's going to be the hard part. That's small. They're bigger be no problem, but that is really tiny. Sorry about that, guys. Daughter won't leave me alone tonight. Don't she know I'm live? Uh-oh. Why is this not going in here? All right. And we need that hinge part, which is, what part is that in my mind? A twenty seven. These thing jigs. And now I think we combine these together. from our store got crazy small tips okay um are they yeah but it's still drawing triangles man that's hard to draw a triangle freehand that's my problem i want that to look, it look accurate i can't have looking like i just hand drew a triangle <laughs> maybe if i tape it off and use them that might work now are they opaque enough to go over black is the question or do i have to paint white first and then use them so many questions yo youtube get your live game together you keep cutting me off i hate that shit. all right so these shoulders definitely did the shadowing thing on them and uh, you might be able to see that the bombs are darker not even from the shadow but they actually are darker So the pre uh, pre highlighting was definitely done on those. And you might be able to see it along here where the top is a little lighter. Don't know if you can see that though. Um, again, top of the head is very top of the head is brighter than say back here. Very subtle though. That's how I like it. Subtle. I 
I do need to check the art stores out again, though. See what any other cool stuff they have going on. You never know you can find an art store that you can use. So we get the shoulders on. I got that mechanism. The arms are already built. All right, color the arms again. Do they have enough? Ugh. That one needs a little bit of touch up paint, and this one is decent. How's our touch up paint looking? So this is the Tamiya, this time I just thinned it, I think I thinned this one with alcohol because I didn't care, it's a little touch up in the joints ain't gonna really matter. Um, when I did the orange I did use a leveling thinner though, because I wanted that to be consistent since it was right up on the front. This is going to be mostly folded up and you won't see 90% of it, so not a big deal. If I was smarter, because I had already pre-painted that with the airbrush, I would have taped it off when I was airbrushing the white part, but eh, say la vie, say la vie. You want to make sure when you're doing this that, that you move it around so that you hit all the parts that are hidden. That if you start posing them, you don't want that white paint to start showing up again. So usually when you're painting, you want to drag the brush. Keep the brush wet enough so that the paint just rolls right off of it. So often you want to dip it in your, you know, water for using water paints or your thinner. So it's already wet, then you put your paint on there. And if you do that, it should just want to roll right off the brush. I'm gonna have some thinner up here. There we go. All right, so I'm happy with how that looks now, so we can hopefully just put it in and not worry about it. So these didn't really have any good way to clip them when I was painting them so I just stuck them on the uh, chopsticks So now I can snap. Oh, let's get the hands on there. So we did our hands in almost black. We really darkened up the uh, 
German Grey we're using for the hands and the hatchet and the feet. Because I want those to look like they were out of a slightly different metal or reinforced metal. Then the joints. So they would come in, these kind of items would come in more contact with the uh, stuff they would probably need a tougher material on them. And it gives you a nice little variation in color on your kit. So I think we had a total of four colors and then the uh, pre-highlighting. So not a lot of colors on this kit. I mean, not including the green that's going to need to go in the eyes. Uh, should put the weapons on his hand first, right? So I'll mess those up later. Let's get the gun in there because the gun's pretty much done. The uh, blade looks like it needs to be. Um, I think I want to put a sharp edge, put some a metal color on a sharp edge since definitely in uh, Iron Blood Orphans they like to use normal weapons. It would just have a sharp edge. Happen here. This is this arm. That's that. What did I do wrong? There you go. That's on the bottom right. Yeah, I like how you do that uh, smoke clear for shading. That is a good technique. That's a harder one to do subtle, I think. The smoke clear is a pretty dominant shading technique. Ah, look at that, look at that, look at that. There we go. Alright, on to the legs, which are already mostly done. We just need to do the thighs. So, thigh parts. Build these hips. Hips, hips, hips. All right, what we got here? Yes, and we need to put your PC part there. Don't need to do that, don't need to do that. What was this? Yeah, I don't need to do that. Don't need to do that. I'm here. PC3. Brax, how would you go about doing the uh, triangles in the eyes? That's a that's gonna be a tough one. <laughs> this dude's about to get a mono eye. Call it a day. 
Um, Don't be too gunked up. There we go. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Brax. The chopper, chop out really small triangles and uh, paint them. That was my plan. Or maybe even paper I could do. Oh, crap. Got to touch up that uh, paint there. Now we're fucking up some paint now. Come on. Another one went right on. Alright, where's the touch up paint? Brush, 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 brush. Where's the thinner? So paint's getting up really sticky now. It's been sitting for a while. Because we're almost done. Just hit this up real quick in here. Cause I scraped it a little bit, try to force that in. Actually, that's not even where it's from. I think these are just didn't get painted deep enough. All right, that should do it. Two, uh, where's a stupid thing? Two legs down. All right, so that must mean it's time for hips. one of the pieces of that paint because I knew it was going to be not need to be painted This is a piece if you were insane. I mean, most of this is hidden, but you could eas easily uh, seam this all up. I don't think it even shows really, but could have gone crazy and done that. But it would have taken you more than a day, probably. And the goal of this isn't to be like, oh, I'm some insane quick builder, because I'm definitely not. I like to build slow. But it's just to show you that doing customs, painting, ain't all that hard. Just do it. And you can stop bitching about a lot of P Bandai and just make it yourself. Mm. 
Oh shit, what is B? Uh oh. <laughs> There's a part I don't think I painted correctly. If I got painted at all. Uh oh. I don't know what the freak that part is. <laughs> B3. And where is B3? I don't remember a B3. We got a problem. We are missing a part. Alright, guess we're going to complete this with one missing part, because I'm not sure where I went. I don't think I threw anything away, though. No. So we're missing the part that goes in the back skirt that holds the uh, gun in place if you mount it in the back. That's weird. Alright, moving on. To figure out where that is later. Hopefully, this part can't. <laughs> I can't even go on without it. That's so stupid. Hold it. Is it on this side? Yeah, it's on this side. <laughs> Our missing hole. I'll figure that out later. This is a nice little detail that they kept separate. This little part that goes in the front of the skirt. This is why Bandai makes good kits. Instead of making it to figure out how to paint this stupid little part, they put it separately. That looks nice. Hmm. I feel like I should cut these apart and make them move separately when I do that. I don't think they need to be together. I probably shouldn't do that because I messed up my uh, paint there. Yep. They can be separate. Hopefully it was all worth messing up my paint for. Uh, do we have any orange touch-up left? that up anymore. Get this stupid thing in. It's a good part. So it's a little scratch. So that's one of those things you gotta keep these skirts apart. At least until the paint really hardens. But I think it was still scraped pretty hard. 
All right, now I get to see it all together. Oh, I get these side skirts on. And we need some feet. And it'd be nice to find the missing part. Extra PC parts for. I probably want some feet. Paint's still slightly tacky. I don't want to say tacky. I'm sure, if I stuck my finger in it for a while, it'd probably leave a fingerprint, but it's not tacky. It's not fully, fully cured either. It's touchable, not cured. All right. So we need some feet. Small part in the back makes sense. <laughs> Dude, can't complain about ankle movement in this one. I got none. Smallest range. Uh, just a little paint there. We'll have to touch that up. All right. He's coming together. Try not to chip any more paint. I think we got contact. Yep. One day, P Bandai. Not bad. So that's his other weapon. Got to touch up that little bit there. Um, there's a little spot there. I got to touch up with the dark black paint or dark paint. I am trying to figure out what some of these thrusters though. So I don't know. First of all, why I have two extra thrusters. And second question is, is these are wrong thrusters in the wrong spot. There we go. All right. So, 
I didn't think these thrusters were going to be exposed, so I didn't bother the paint all the way around when I did them. So, i got to do that real quick. Paint, paint, brush. Ah, scary man! I got that. Can't wait to top coat this thing so it's a little safer. Uh, probably also when the paint dries, it'll be safer. Ah. All right, just doing a quick brush up on this. Um. It's too live. Always oh, kind of. So yeah, Brax, I was saying that um I like how the orange is glossy. Um when I gloss it all to do my panel lines, I will see if I like it all glossy, but being IBL, I kind of feel like it needs to be matte. But maybe I'll compromise and do satin. This little stocky dude. Zero ankle movement. See why he was a. Uh, <laughs> we saw him first in space. So we gotta find that part. Disappeared on me. Hope I didn't throw it away somehow. So yeah, guys, come by this weekend and see it in person. See if you can pick up on the uh, Zeno, Zenithal shading. I can see it in some spots. Definitely the head's a little lighter. The shoulders here are a little lighter. This is definitely lighter than some other parts, but I think it's kind of lost in the gloss right now on the orange parts. But like out here, it's definitely lighter than back here. And that was on purpose. This is getting a natural shade right now, so. I forgot how the pose has got to go. But I think we're pretty much done. He's looking pretty good. Pretty happy. So let's take a look at what we're shooting for and what we got. So let me see if I can find a P band I won. There we go. So remember, I haven't panel lined anything yet, but this is what we we're going for. This is what we got. There's, ooh, sorry about that. That is a little bright orange. I didn't really like that orange. This is a little darker. This is all to me a paint. So if you want to try this yourself, it's easily, easily accessible at most hobby shops. Yeah. So I think after we panel line this bad boy up, he will look better. Yeah. Let's see this picture up here. This one looks painted. I really like this uh, gun effect this guy has in here. That's dope. Find me that effect. That looks pretty cool. Not sure if that's an effect part or he just uh, did that in um touch up thing like after pictures type of things. Photoshopped it. That one's really nice. I really like that shade of orange that guy did. Mine's a little brighter than that orange. That one's a dull orange. That's that Citadel orange I wanted to use, I think. And he got some nice decals on those decals really set it off. I find me some decals now. Hmm. I think I have some caution ones. And look at that. I think he used. Oh, that gives me an idea. I have mirror stickers, I think, that are like iridescent mirror stickers. If I cut those on the chopper in triangles, that would be dope. 
Mm. So I gotta look at pictures, get the inspiration. But and then we got the artwork right there. I think we got that pretty close. So we got obviously we need some panel lines. Might even uh do a little more post highlighting on like those feet. I don't think I'm gonna do any weathering. That's usually my go-to, but uh, I think I'm gonna leave this guy pretty clean. So one day build, tomorrow I should be able to, I really should drop my gloss on it tonight so it can dry and then tomorrow I can um, panel on it. it. Might even want to let a little more time pass than that. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna panel on it tomorrow. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave now gloss coat it tomorrow let it sit over the weekend so that gloss coat hardens up real good because you don't want to rush that put that panel wash on it it sucks right into your ugh, into your gloss that's a nightmare so i will let that set up right i'm not going to rush that at all but one day build out the box this looks as good if not better than the p band eye and once we panel line it all up and everything's gonna look dope like I said, I'm not sure on the P band eye how they handle because it's not a separate piece. So I'm not sure. Maybe on the P band eye it is, but I doubt it. That might be a sticker. That might be somebody just took the time to paint it. I don't know. Don't knew, but I'm guessing. Definitely guessing that you have to paint it. I think we nailed it though. Looks right. Got some nice details in, like that little bit of orange. That was a pain in the ass to put right there. Got some highlights that are very subtle. You can probably see them right now. Like that's definitely lighter than this skirt here. This is lighter than this. I think it's light right now. So this was definitely highlighted. That was highlighted. This was highlighted. The very front of the orange on the face card was highlighted. All the white was highlighted underneath all this up here. This is off white, the rest of it. This is highlighted across here, across here, and the top of the head. And when it's all together, yeah, I still notice my mess ups on the uh, arm seam line. Those are a pain in the ass. They could have done a better job of making that one a uh, different way of doing that piece. So definitely something I need to work on still. Especially, I can't do that one on camera. I need to take my time with that. That by itself, to do that right, would probably take like <laughs> two hours of work. I should have probably oozed the, the glue a little bit more. And then sanded it down, but I don't want to mess up the panel lines. But if you ooze the glue... You just rescribe the panel lines. The panel lines didn't even match up that well to start out with, so that might have been the thing to do. But that's on some expert level type stuff. Yeah, you can see it right there. See how bright that is? That's dope. I like that. Real subtle. Gotta really look to see it. Alright guys, thanks for chilling, hanging out. I'll uh, repost this all as one. You guys can uh, tell your friends, you know, help people out. Builders and poor and builders. Peace. Mm -hmm.